Past the blaring light of the hallway, I could only see her silhouette. There's a monster in my closet, she said. My wife was more awake than me. She started to get out of bed. No, my daughter said. You don't go, Mommy. Daddy's braver. Peter, you hear that? Apparently you're braver, my wife mumbled as she slid back into the covers. I am, I said. The girl took after her mother with the overactive imagination. This wasn't the first time our daughter had woken us up in the middle of the night with abstract fears, and I, I feared that it wouldn't be the last. As I dug my slippers out from beneath the bed, I convinced myself that with a bit of rational thinking, I could put an end to these 2 a.m. wake-ups. It's the squiggle again, she whispered, dangling her legs from the bed. The squiggle was just another in a long list of creatures that would hide in my daughter's closet. There were goblins, there were bears, and, after a fumbled explanation of world politics, Osama bin Laden shared the closet space for about a month. That night, it was the squiggle. She kept on looking at the closet door, expecting me to open it like I always did, but I didn't. Instead, I sat down next to her on the bed. Can you describe the squiggle to me, Annie? I said. She looked back at the closet, as if she was asking it for permission to speak. Doesn't feel... real. She finally whispered. Well, Annie, that's because it's like spaghetti, but with eyes, and it's on fire. Her eyes were filled up with tears again. It doesn't feel real. It's like a drawing. A drawing that no one should ever draw. It doesn't feel real. Annie, have you ever considered that the squiggle doesn't feel real because it isn't actually real? What does consider mean? She asked, wiping her tears. It's when you think about something really hard, and it's when you think about something you thought was true, but you think about it really hard and you realize it's not true. The thoughts of the closet drifted from her face. She was no longer a scared child. She was... A young mind trying to make sense of the world. Do you ever consider things? Yeah, I said, all the time. And does it help? When I was about your age, your grandfather used to take me to the lake every weekend. One time, while we were out swimming, he told me that there was an angry octopus that lived inside of the lake that ate little boys. So I got scared. I refused to get back into the water. And was there an octopus? No. Your grandfather was just playing a trick on me. There was never an octopus in the lake, but I... I didn't believe that. The octopus felt real to me. And after hearing my grandfather's story, I was sure I could feel the octopus in the water. I was sure he was there. But then you considered that he wasn't there. My daughter said thoughtfully. There was awe in her voice, as if I had revealed some great cosmic secret to her. You considered, and you weren't scared anymore. A bit of the summer breeze drifted in through the open window. My daughter no longer seemed scared. I felt like a good dad. Do you want to consider that maybe the squiggle is just a figment of your imagination? What's a figment? It doesn't matter. Just consider that there's no monster in your closet. Okay. She shut her eyes in concentration. For a moment, she struggled with her thoughts, but then her eyes opened, and she smiled. Thank you, Daddy, she said. Outside, the sky was a chaotic smattering of stars. Somewhere off in the distance, a police siren crawled into the night. I was the only one looking at the closet. Not scared anymore? I asked. No. I consider the squiggle might not be real, and now I'm not scared. Great, I said, and got up. Good night, Annie. Good night, Daddy. She pulled her unicorn covers over herself and closed her eyes. I looked at the closet. It was covered with cartoon horse stickers that had fused themselves into the wood. The closet would forever remain covered in ponies. It perplexed me how anyone could be scared of such a harmless piece of furniture. 
Hey, Annie, I said, eyeing the closet handle. Do you want me to check inside the closet? She sat up in bed, confused. Why? There's nothing in there. Another rush of pride went through my lungs. The talk had gone better than expected. Well, um, for old time's sake, I said. She laughed at me as if I was ridiculous for suggesting that something might be in the closet. But she sat up in bed to get a better view. I grabbed the handle and prepared to swing the door open in a theatrical fashion, but... I couldn't. I was positive there was nothing in the closet. I knew that the squiggle was just a product of my daughter's imagination. I even found the idea of spaghetti with eyes to be a bit funny. Yet somewhere, deep within me, a primal fear bubbled. I was consciously aware that the closet was empty, but there was doubt in my heart. Daddy? She asked. Are you scared? No, I said. I'm not scared. I pulled open the door and defiantly stared into the abyss of the tiny dresses and coats. For a brief moment, my rational mind took control and chastised me for being overly dramatic. But then, in the darkness of the clothes, I saw movement. I saw it. I saw that blasphemous monstrosity, which confounded my entire perception of the universe. I saw that horrid nightmare pried from the depths of God's fever dream. I saw the squiggle. The visage of the corroded flesh stole the blood from my face. Its sickly eyes stared deep into my soul. My knees became weak. I couldn't stand in the same world that the monstrosity existed in. The unyielding pressure of an incoming faint pushed my body off balance. Before the curtains of reality came down, I, I remember swaying towards the closet. My face became intimately familiar with one of the cartoon horse stickers my daughter had attached to the furniture. With a dull wooden thud, I lost consciousness. I awoke to the sensation of frozen peas pressed against my forehead. The lights were on. I was on the couch in the living room. Next to me sat my wife. One hand on the makeshift ice pack, the other gripped around her phone. Should I call an ambulance? She asked. No. Uh, I said, I'm, no, I'm, I'm fine. You're shaking. I was. The afterimage of the horror was still bouncing around my skull. The unexplainable madness that I had witnessed was still sending twitches through my shivering muscles. I'm, I'm fine, I repeated. What happened? My mouth felt like it was full of battery acid. There were no words to explain the ghastly fiend that I had seen hiding in my daughter's closet. I wanted to scream. I wanted to pray. I wanted to beg the heavens for some sort of an, an explanation to the cruel images that were seared into my mind. I fell, I finally said. I'm fine. Are you sure? Yes. She lifted the frozen peas off my forehead. Oh, it doesn't look like you need stitches. That's good, I said. I wasn't there. I, I wasn't sitting on my couch being tended to by my wife. I was... I was somewhere else. I was standing stark naked before a cruel world I never knew existed. A horrible blizzard of incomprehensible shapes was freezing my bones. I was a frail worm face to face with the goliath of the abyss. I was nothing in a world that meant me harm. And yet suddenly, past the fear, past the soul-shattering features of the abomination, something recognizable took hold. A familiar worry grasping my being. I sat up on the couch. Where's Annie? Sleeping, my wife said. I came as soon as I heard the crash. The blood from your cut scared her for a bit, but she was tucking out enough to fall asleep. I got up and I moved straight towards my daughter's bedroom. My fear of that horrid creature had not passed. With every step towards her room, my jaw clenched tighter and tighter, but my legs carried me regardless. I needed to make sure my child was safe. She was lying in bed, deep in her dreams. The unicorn covers were pulled over her face, her... The closet was shut. Are you coming back to bed? My wife's touch made me flinch. I couldn't keep my eyes off the closet. There was a dark spot where my forehead met the furniture. I'm gonna, 
I'm going to clean up the blood, I said. Don't wait up. Are you sure you're fine? Yes. I lied. The damp cloth from the kitchen didn't make a difference. I was too late. My blood had soaked into the cartoon horse sticker. The red splotch would be a permanent feature of my daughter's closet. It would always remind me of what I had seen. I considered whether the creature I had seen could have been a byproduct of lack of sleep, but the thought refused to take hold. The body of the creature had managed to seem both impossible and unavoidably real in the same stroke. I knew that I couldn't sleep unless I convinced myself the horror had never been real to begin with. With my mind turning faint again, I touched the handle of the closet. My vision was starting to blur. A familiar sound of static started to buzz around my ears, but I, I didn't let go of the closet door. I needed to confront reality. I needed to believe that the squiggle wasn't real. The empty closet did not lighten my heart. It simply reminded me of what I saw. It simply made the memory of that burning bush of flesh and eyes shine brighter. The squiggle ran away. She looked at me from her unicorn bed. There was a calmness in her voice which suggested the hell spawn that we had both witnessed wasn't a thing worth worrying about. You saw it? You saw that? That, that, that thing? She nodded her head. After you hit your head on the closet, it crawled over you and jumped out of the window. Crawled over me? I yelled, louder than I should have. I could hear my wife switch on the night lamp in the bedroom. Yes, my daughter replied, casually. The squiggle went over your tummy and out of the window. It's okay, it's not real. The thought of those wet strands of flesh crawling over my body made me feel incurably violated. My abdomen was no longer my own. It belonged to that the horrible nightmare. But you saw it. Yeah. And you're not scared? No. She said, smiling. I considered whether the squiggle was real. And now I'm brave. Like you. I wanted to grab her and tell her that she should be scared. I wanted to tell her what she saw, what, what we both saw, was something that sh should inspire wails and, and despair. But her innocent smile made me turn away. Her fragile mind had made peace with the squiggle. I was the only one being haunted. Good night, Annie, I said, closing her window and locking it. Good night, Daddy, she replied, descending back into her blanket. My wife was standing in the doorway of the bedroom, concerned. I told her that I couldn't go back to sleep. Told her I... I needed to be alone. I told her I was going to go watch some television. The screens turned to static of a dead channel. The ashtray is full, the bottle half empty. We live in a universe that means us harm. We live in a... A godless world where unearthly abominations hide in little girls' closets. Regardless of how much I drink or how hard I try to rationalize, I can't... I can't, I can't convince myself otherwise. All of the windows in the house are shut and locked, but I can hear the birds starting to sing outside. A new day is starting. And I'm unable to face it. I can't carry on knowing that the, the thing is out there somewhere, crawling through the grass. I drink more, praying that the liquor will help me forget. I drink more, desperately hoping that I'll be able to convince myself that the abomination was a trick of the eye. I drink more, knowing it won't help. Good evening once again, kids. It's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I want to tell you thank you for watching tonight's video, or for listening to tonight's episode of the podcast that's available on Spotify, or on Apple Music, or on uh, um, any any other places that you can get podcasts. I'm not I'm not entirely sure where people listen to podcasts. Uh, if you guys are watching on YouTube, though, I would really appreciate if you click the subscribe button, click that thumbs up button, and hit the bell for me, because that's what we're supposed to say now. We're required by YouTube law. As always, I want to give a big thank you to all of my supporters on Patreon. You guys are the real MVPs, and you allow us to get a whole bunch of custom stories that are only heard here on this channel, on this podcast. 
So, a very big thank you to Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Stephanie Butler, Bobby Carmen, Tristan Pelton, Chase Burnett, Diana Krause, Maria Walker, Tanya Oren, Payne Gravy, Inactive Hermit, Austin Johnson, Crazy Kid, Mr. Marcus Blitz, Aka Limchok, Dirt Diver 030, Matt Bach, Jabbles Raz, Voice of Sand, Coffee Zombie, Matthew McNeese, Shelly J, Jeremy H, Geraltazal, Ficomel, Nana, The Morgan, Nick Weaver, Melted Lake, Tali Sue, Sky Maria Ravenswood, William King, Reaper 61167, Darth Miver, Micah Ortiz, Satanic Aries, Nessie, Parafa Panda, Bardo Hawk 764, Lambda M98, Harley, Billy Morrow, Sashi Suzaku, My Body Sounds Like Rice Krispies, Miss Xander, Suji Campbell, Stricken, Azarine Fox, Freddy Krueger, Happy Birthday Jason Wilson, Lisa Cottrell, Caspian, Hades Nephew, Tater Chip, Acid System, Prozac and Pancake Appreciation Society, Cryptic Nightmares, Kiri the Sloth, Tommy Green, Fester's Lampshade, Sky Harbor, Nico Kyle, Rafael Rodriguez, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Daniel Polson, Trey Smiles, and Corey Kenshin. And of course, everybody who's down there in the description as well, and everybody who can support on patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta for even one dollar, I appreciate it greatly, and I'm sure that all the authors that we were able to work with appreciate it too. So, thank you guys so much, thank you for listening, and sweet dreams. <laughs>